Hello, and welcome to part 26 of my Hogwarts mock series. Today we're taking a look at another interior that I've filled in in a part of the castle I've already built. You know what that is, you've seen the video title already. But before we get on with that, I thought I would go through a few things. First of which is my first attempt at Sigfig just here. Might have seen him in the thumbnail of my previous video where I announced the Q&A and the competition. That's a subtle reminder, if you want to enter that, then please go onto that video, leave a comment um, and uh, any questions that you would like to be answered in the Q&A. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you will be entered into that small competition. Details are in the video. Um, anyway, I put that in the, um, in the thumbnail of the video as I showed my face for the first time. So those of you who saw that, what do you reckon? I just made this out of existing pieces that I already had, and uh, I reckon it's fairly good. I couldn't find one that had the glasses and beard combination that I liked, so I've gone with the beard for the moment, and I'm um, just pretending I'm wearing contact lenses or something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments of that sig fig. But before we go on to uh, the new build for Hogwarts this time, we're going to look at a couple of amendments which I have made recently, but which I haven't featured in a video. The first of those is a very small thing. I've just added this stickered tile from the Chamber of Secrets set to my astronomy tower. Uh, it's very appropriate, obviously, as it's a star chart, and I really like it with the little uh, Bionicle Easter egg. The astronomy tower as a whole is probably going to get a fairly major revamp at some point fairly soon, but I will leave that for its own future video. The other thing that I've done and not mentioned yet is getting the correct coloured tiles for this section just here. So before, these tiles on top were all in dark bluish grey. I got those tiles really without thinking uh, that it didn't really match the rules that I've established in terms of the different layers of buildings. And uh, that was a bit of a mistake as those tiles were not cheap. The corner cut ones I'm talking about, the 45 degree ones. But I've now replaced those with the correct tan coloured ones so that when we pop the building back on top, Everything now matches up a little bit better. I'm being very pedantic when I decided I needed to do this, but I found a store that had them and decided to go ahead and buy them. Right, okay, time to go on to the central tower. So you've seen the central tower before, both in its own original video and also in last update, where I took a look at the Charms classroom, part of which is just here. But if we turn it around, we can now see what I have added. There we go, that is the Ravenclaw common room. Now, it's not looking particularly light at the moment, but uh, thinking ahead, I have left the top floor partially off. I took it off to do the building and I've left it off so I can literally just pop it off and then put it to one side and we can get a little bit more light in. So there we go, I'll just spin it from side to side, bring it a little bit closer. Here is my Ravenclaw common room packed full of details, it's quite a small space, but I think I've managed to get a decent amount in there. What I'll do now is I'll just take off this front arch so we can get an even better look inside and then run you through the details. Right, that's the arch removed. My camera's having a little bit of trouble focusing, so I'll try and move things around so they're in focus all the time. We'll start from this side. You can see I've created a fireplace here, and that tile with sticker on it in the middle there is the one piece, pretty much, that I've taken from the Charms Class Hogwarts Moment set. Um, that was the one that I mentioned I was leaving on because I thought it was perfect for the Ravenclaw common room. It's just got that sort of uh, bird emblem in the middle as the... Uh, Emblem of Ravenclaw is confusingly not a raven, but an eagle. So that's there. There's some fire within the fireplace, as it should be. And uh, this is just a, another fairly simple build. I've tried to keep it a little bit different. Obviously, I did the fireplace for the Charms classroom last time, and that was based on a real thing. So I've uh, just taken a few liberties and created something of my own for this time. On top of that, I am very happy that I found a place for my old Dumbledore's lectern. Now this was in my Great Hall and I had it there before the new gold Hedwig with outstretched wings was released, so I was able to substitute those parts. And uh, I thought, what better place to have it than up on here? You know, it's got the sort of spread out wings. Yes, it doesn't have a, a head or anything, but you can imagine it's some sort of a bird symbolism, an eagle, a trophy, something like that. Um, and it's also my little nod to the eagle door knocker, which is the way that you get into the Ravenclaw common room. I couldn't find a way to actually put that in. I did think of putting it just here on the wall, but I couldn't find an appropriate combination of pieces that I liked. And also it took up space on the interior wall, which I wanted to save for other things. So that's why I've included that there. And it's really nice to see that that piece hasn't gone to waste. 
In the back corner, it's a little difficult to see. I've just used a four by four reddish brown wedge plate for a table or desk. On that is a single book that is uh, with an unprinted tan tile inside. Just see if I can get a slightly better view. There you go. Just held in place with a gold clip. Um, just use gold because it was what was available to me. And uh, also I'm thinking it's some sort of uh, book holder. So very serious about their studying in Ravenclaw. Allowed to say that as a uh, self-declared Ravenclaw. Pottermore insisted on putting me in Gryffindor, but I definitely know in my heart of hearts I am a nerdy Ravenclaw. On the table as well, we've got a standard candle and then a small, um, well, it's representing a quill here. It's the same piece I used for the feathers in my charms classroom in an inkwell. We've got a small chair there. It's just secured in place with a single stud, so it's rotatable. On the back wall there, we've got a sticker. That sticker comes from the uh, Astronomy Tower set, and I've just moved it onto another brick so that the other sticker on the outside of that brick can stay in the Astronomy Tower. Fairly simple. Again, using Robin Hood Brick's patented hot tea technique. I really need to ask him for the file for that stamp, because I keep mentioning it. Anyway, moving round, we've then got a very important statue. This is my version of the statue of Rowena Ravenclaw. Now, um, I did try to match the figure that comes in the large Hogwarts castle set. Unfortunately, the hairpiece that comes in that set is not available in white. And uh, since it's supposed to be a marble statue, I wanted it in white rather than grey. Now, this isn't a massive problem. Um, I like to kind of think of this as Ravenclaw maybe later in life um, or just with a different hairstyle. Hey, you know, she's allowed to change it. It doesn't have to be the same. I also originally chose this hair because it's got the small pinhole on the top where you can fit in a tiara. I've seen other people use that to represent Ravenclaw's diadem, and I initially tried that, but both because of space, you can see she wouldn't really be able to fit underneath the uh, upper floor there. And also, I'm not sure about the look. I think it, uh, it's, I mean, it's a tiara and a diadem is kind of a tiara, but the, uh, the diadem I wanted was uh, a lot more subtle, and that really wasn't coming across in the statue. Other than that, she's a fairly simple build, all completely plain white. Um, I think her, excuse me for just nudging the camera, I think her head is actually, yep, <laughs> it's actually a skeleton's head on backwards, just because I wanted a nice, clean, new white head, and uh, I think that came from Barracuda Bay. Let's see if we can get her back in. No, we can't, I'm not going to try on camera. Anyway, she just sits in the corner there on a uh, two by two round jumper plate with some of those quarter round tiles around her and just sits at a 45 degree angle so she's facing into the room. On the opposite side of the fireplace, trying to get some light in, we've just got a sofa. This is a fairly simple build. It uses um, modified plates with bars and clips to hold the rear on and uh, just uses slopes for there and the armrests and is in the Ravenclaw colours of blue and, well, the thing is, in the books, it's blue and bronze, I believe, but the uh, film decorations in particular, this sticker at the back, use silver. So I've gone for light bluish grey as the other colour, along with dark blue, which I think works out really nicely with some gold feet underneath. I wanted something small to go on the wall just here, so I have created a little shield which can come off. This is a very simple build. It's just a two by two plate on the back, a couple of one by one tiles, and then these... Uh, I'm never sure whether to call them wedges or plates, but they are these pieces with a little 45 degree cut. It's having a real, real difficult time focusing, but uh, you can see what they are. Just one in each colour, and that just gets held on by a modified brick with studs on the side. OK, so that finishes everything for the ground floor, uh, as it were. But um, I decided that since this was such a tall area, you can see from the outside with these double windows that the room was very tall, I wanted a way to fill it um, without it seeming overcrowded. And while searching online for some inspiration, I found a um, someone's artistic interpretation that had a sort of second floor uh, mezzanine, which acted as a sort of library. I'll see if I can find that picture and put it up here. If it isn't, I'll put something else. Um, so I decided to go ahead and construct that. Now, there isn't room for a minifigure to stand up here. If I just put my sig fig in there, you'll see my head is protruding above the uh, top of the walls. But uh, I like the suggestion that this is somewhere you can go. Maybe you can imagine it as being forced perspective. Just angle up slightly there. Um, and to fill this, I have created a couple of bookcases, one on the side there. Another one on the side there, using very simple techniques I've used before. It's just a brick with a stud on the side, and then those are plates and tiles going sideways. 
Then I've got these uh, modified, let's see if I can take it off without destroying the whole thing, these modified plates or tiles, which only have a stud at either end, which just allows those to sit nicely there. Um, just use a plate with a rail for a bit of variety as if it's a book sticking out. That sits on there. Then at the back, I've just created something slightly different, maybe uh, some sort of chest of drawers or bureau or something with a couple of drawers out front. No idea what these are supposed to be, but they are details. Um, they're the they're the magical greebling that makes this whole thing work. Then in the corners, we've got two different sets of lights. We've got one here sitting on a table. It's just one of those chrome uh, dish pieces on the top, which I think actually came from the Dermastrang ship in the first place. And then we've got a golden lantern that came with the um, student pack that I got from the Lego store. So there we go. Um, the walkway itself actually is using those curved plates, which have got the cutouts. They're four by four with a three by three cutout, two of them and they just make a nice arc around the sides, and the whole thing is just supported on two by two inverted slopes underneath. Wow, I really have been talking for a while about this. I thought this was going to be a short video. That does sum pretty much all of it up though. There is one final detail, which isn't actually part of this, it's actually on this part, and that is the all important ceiling. Now, I had a bit of trouble with this. I tried and tried and tried to create a ceiling that had the studs facing down, and I think I came to the conclusion that it was just gonna give me a headache if I carried on doing it. And so I've gone for the easy route, which is just a dark blue plate, and then one by one round pearl gold studs. Um, I did try to use those star-shaped pieces, um, and I would have done two if I had been able to secure them with the studs facing up, but unfortunately they've only got a stud on the bottom. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been a long day. Um, I may try and change that in future, but for the moment I'm relatively happy with this. So now I've shown you everything I can for the first time actually, since I built this, put the top floors back on properly and we can see how the whole thing looks. And there we go, that's the central tower put back together. Obviously with the floor on top, it does make things a little bit darker. If I tilt it towards the window, you get a little bit more light in there. And then if I tilt it back, you do see those golden studs uh, on the top there, representing the stars in the ceiling. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I've made good use of the space and managed to get lots of details in. Um, I didn't want to make it too cluttered. I could have gone the route that I did with Filch's office, but I think that would have been a bit overkill and might have ruined the effect. Okay, that's it for the Ravenclaw common room. Obviously, that's not all of Ravenclaw house, and we do have a couple of empty floors just up there, so I wonder what could be coming in the next Hogwarts update. Um, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, before then, of course, we are going to have the uh, Q&A and the competition winner announcement. So if you're watching this video when it comes out, you've got uh, tomorrow, Saturday, and probably until about midday on Sunday, and then I'll really have to start going through and filming some answers and picking a winner so uh, please get in and do that if you're watching this at a later date then I'm sorry but uh, you have lost your chance to win but I may do another competition in the future who knows so uh, until then thank you very much for watching if you enjoy my channel then please subscribe if you like what I do then leave a comment and I will try my best to get back to you and I will see you in the next one bye